So now that we've looked at how to uh, use the normal approximation to the binomial distribution, we're now going to have a look at how this can be used in hypothesis testing. So we can be expected to perform a hypothesis test with the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. As this is the only approximation that we have, whenever a question says to use a suitable approximation, we know that we need to use this test, the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. With this, the hypothesis stayed the same. However, our test statistic is going to be different and the way that we calculate it is going to be different. But because we end up with a probability, we are still using the significance level for one tailed and half the significance level for two tailed for our critical values. So here we have a school estimates the probability that a student gets an A or a B in biology in a biology exam is 0.6. The school appoints a new teacher who has not, never taught the topic before. The head of science is concerned that the A and B pass rate may decrease. So from that, we can already write down our H0 and H1 because it says here that we're going to have to test the head of science's claim. So our H0 is going to be that P equals 0.6 and our H1 is going to be that P is less than 0.6 because we're seeing if it's decreased. So although all students passed in the following year, out of a group of 19 students, so that tells us that we're using X squiggle B, 19, 0.6, only eight of them got an A or B grade. So that tells us that we're starting off with the probability that X is less than eight. And because it says to use a suitable distributional approximation at a 10% significance level, we know that we're not going to find this probability. We're going to have to change this. So, as we did before, we're going to have to find the mean, which remember is NP. So that's 19 times 0 0.6. So back in the normal calculator bit of your calculator, 19 times 0.6 that gives us 11.4 for the mean and then for the variance we're going to have to use n p 1 minus p which gives us 19 times 0.6 times 0.4 and as we talked about before this is the same as what i've already got in my calculator so i can just times that by 0.4 which gives me 4.56. And remember, that's the variance. When I put it in my calculator, I'm going to have to square root it. So back into the statistics part of our calculator, dist norm NCD. And remember that this is where we're going to find our value. However, we first of all have to change our question. Remember our continuity correction. I'm wanting less than or equal to eight. So if I had my bars, if this was the bar for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I'm wanting less than or equal to eight. So I'm going to want to have my upper value as 8.5. So we're looking at the probability that X is less than or equal to 8.5. So my lower is going to be minus a really big number, minus nine, 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 nine. My upper is going to be 8.5. My standard deviation is going to be the square root of 4.56. And my mean is going to be 11.4. And that gives me a probability of 0.0872. Remember that that is our test statistic. The critical value, because it's one tailed, just stays as 0.1. So as the test statistic is less than the critical value, we're going to reject H0 at a 10% significance level there is
is sufficient evidence to suggest the proportion of A's and B's is less than 0.6. Remember, you can also add a statement to make sure that you definitely get all the marks about is the head teacher's claim correct? So, yes, the head of science is correct. So I'd like you to pause the video now and give the now you try a go. So hopefully you've paused the video and given the now you try a go. So this time we have 70% of students in the sixth form college do no fitness training or sports. This was criticised by several sporting groups who felt that it was an overestimate of the population. Uh, sorry, overestimated proportion. They conducted a sur uh, I conducted a survey in my school and found that 5 out of 10 students in the sixth form do no fitness training or sports activities out of school. Use a suitable distribution approximation uh, to test if the survey has overestimated the proportion at a 5% significance level. So our H0 is that the probability is 0 0.7. Our H1 is going to be that it's less than 0 0.7. Because we asked 10 people, at the beginning we're looking at x squiggle b, 10, 0.7. And we're looking at the probability of x being less than or equal to 5. We have to find the mean and the variance again using np and np1 minus p, which gives us these two values here. Using our continuity correction, instead of looking at less than or equal to 5, we're looking at less than or equal to 5.5. And we're putting that into ncd, which gives us 0.150. That's our test statistic. The critical value is 0.05. So as the test statistic is greater than the critical value, we accept H0, a 5% significance level. There is insufficient evidence to suggest that the probability of doing no fitness training out of school is less than 70%. Uh, so then as our final say sentence, no, it probably wasn't an overestimate. Uh, just to clarify a few things there, you can also get somewhere you're trying to test if it's greater than, in which case we'd be looking at greater than or equal to, and then again, think about your distribution. So then we'd go for the lower bound of the number rather than the upper bound of the number. And we can also be given a two-tailed question, in which case that's okay, because remember when we have a two-tailed binomial hypothesis testing question, in order to decide if we're doing less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we have to calculate the mean first, which we're doing anyway as part of our working with the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Um, I just want to clarify something about something I wrote before here, where I said, yes, the head of science is correct. I should have put, yes, the head of science is probably Correct. Remember that we can't make any definite uh, any definite se se sentences, sorry, or statements. We have to make sure that we're just saying that they are probably correct or probably incorrect. Thank you very much for listening.